What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the art of route running. So we're going to be talking about three specific things that wide receivers can do on every single route that is going to guarantee them more separation on their breaks and get them open more frequently on their route. So I hope this video can help you guys out, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to know the specific drills that you need to do to build on these aspects of the wide receiver position, check out that very first link in the description below for our eight-week wide receiver on-field workout plan slash split. So pretty much what you'll get is it's eight weeks of workouts mapped out for you, all the on-field drills for route running, releases, et cetera, with the exact sets, reps, and a video example of each drill. So if you guys want a daily wide receiver eight-week plan, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So first thing, you guys hear me talk about it a lot if you guys are familiar with this channel, is selling verticals, selling fades, selling the nine, whatever it might be. But what does that exactly mean and what should that look like? And this is a perfect example of that. So we have to be aware of number Number one, what is the DB looking for every single time? Where are his eyes supposed to be in man coverage and zone coverage? Is a little bit different, but the same principles apply. He's trying to find a change in your pad level. He is supposed to be watching your hips because he has been taught that your hips will not lie. So another thing that a DB is looking for is your speed and a change in speed. Because as you guys know, as you're playing a game, as around like the third, fourth quarter shows up, that DB is starting to maybe get a little bit closer to you. Maybe you're not getting as much separation because it's starting to get your speed down. So on every single route, we cannot give indicators. And that's what selling vertical means. So you see when this wide receiver comes off the line, there is not a single thing that changes about his pad level. That is the first thing that I want to focus on. So when he comes off, that pad level does not change. There is no change of the pad level. He keeps the exact same body language up into the break, and the cut is what changes his direction. So many wide receivers, what they will do is right before they get to that break point and they make that cut, because this is an extremely smooth route, is that they will start to raise their chest up. They will start to expose their number, as I like to call it. So a DB who's looking at your hips and you start to raise up like that, what's he going to do? He's going to sit on the route because he knows a route is coming. He's looking for any kind of indicator. That's what takes away from you selling vertical. Now, the other side of things, the second part about selling vertical, a lot of wide receivers will do this. They'll keep the good pad level, but before the break point to prepare for it, you see how this wide receiver does it here. They will start to chop their feet. They will start to shorten up their stride. So if you're going up into a break point and you start to shorten the stride, you start to be real chopping, you see this commonly in a lot of guys who are faster. You know, they try to really get up into the break and, and be quick, be sudden, but they're taking choppy steps. That DB knows a break is coming when you take choppy steps because how do you run a fade? How do you run a vertical? You're in full stride, full speed, good pad level, trying to run away from this DB. That's what we have to make it look like. I heard somebody say this on a route the other day, and I like this analogy. Think of it like you're running, like you're chasing an over-the-shoulder throw. When you're on the stem of a route, whether it's maybe like a stop route, a comeback, an out route, run like you are chasing a ball, and that will help you keep your stride. So if you guys can keep speed, stride, and pad level, you will sell vertical on every route. That is something that can 100% be trained. The tough part that a lot of people have to get used to is the break point while you are running full speed and while you are in full stride. That's where a lot of people struggle. I'm a firm believer that everybody can sell vertical into a route. It's just being efficient right here, which is what will get you out of the break smoothly. Now, that comes with a lot of time. You got to build up your leg strength, your knee stability, your ankle stability. But doing those drills that are realistic, doing those drills at a full speed, full stride pace is what will help you take those breaks to that next level. But you have to build on it and you have to constantly, constantly rep these things out. You can't just go out to a field and run routes. You have to do things that are realistic. I'm not talking about the obstacle course drills that are realistic that will build those facets of your game. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver, fellas. No indicators to this DB. Good pad level, good stride, and good speed. So now, second part of the art of route running, fellas, that you have to understand is you have to understand how to attack a DB's leverage and how that can give you a much easier pass to deal with from a quarterback. So a lot of the times receivers talk, and we talk about it a lot too, the technical aspects of things like, hey, your foot placement, where you should strike the ground, you know, you should sell vertical, you need to be in full stride, you got to drop your hips this certain way to get out of the break. But a lot of the times wide receivers get so caught up in those mechanical aspects of the position, they forget about pretty much the, not so much the X's and O's, but the IQ side of things, the, the, the smarts that go to playing this wide receiver position. Because you look at all the great route runners, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Julio Jones, Stephon Diggs, they have those assets of their game where they, they can pair routes together. They can make, route, make routes look the same, but they know what to do and they know when to do it. And that's the main thing. So this is going to be a scenario where we have an inside Shea DB and he's running a fade route. 
So, so many wide receivers make this mistake. So, we'll play at full speed. So, he does a great job of attacking him, squaring him up, giving him that move to the inside, and then winning on that fade route. So, everybody all the time, everybody works these over-the-shoulder catches. All the time, guys will work the crossover move that this wide receiver does right here where he gives this little one-two head and shoulder fake to the inside. They'll do all the cone drills where they set him up across themselves. But when do we actually apply it? When can I actually use that kind of thing? If you don't know the answer to that question, you're working with a coach, you're working by yourself, and you can't answer that, you're not doing the right things. You, anybody could go do a drill. Anybody could go do a drill perfectly, but can you execute it in a game? And that is what I'm trying to get you to do here. So what's the IQ behind all this? So as a wide receiver, to be creative, to be a creative route runner, you got to understand leverage. So this DB's inside shade, for example. Inside shade, I got to go run a fade. A lot of wide receivers would just maybe stem a tab and then just run. Or they might just, worse, they might just take off and go run. Now, the problem with that is when you do that and you don't threaten this guy inside, he will be right on your hip pocket and force you to the sideline. What, the reason why he's inside shade is what? He does not want to give up this post. So when you come off the line, you want to make sure that you threaten him to that post. So that's when you would attack him and use that crossover move that we were just talking about. That's when you would use that famous one-two that everybody works on those drill works. They work at stepping over a line, stepping around a bag, whatever it is. That's how you can use that. Let's attack him. Let's cross over to the inside. Actually sell like I'm running to the inside because that's what will move him. He is taught not to give up that leverage and and that creates plenty of space for me to the outside. So I'm going to play this thing full speed one more time. This is a textbook example of how you guys can use your stem using the crossover to create more space. Use the tools that we work on in the offseason and apply them in a live game situation versus a different look from a DB every single time. But we are prepared for it because we not only have the art of the skills of route running, but the art of the mental side of the mental aspects of route running. So now, Last but not least, this is more of a mechanical thing. This is more of a physical trait that you guys can have, and that is acceleration out of your breaks. A lot of wide receivers, fellas, do not how to do this properly. They cannot do this properly. They don't know how to actually get into a break and be able to accelerate out, but they don't know the reason why. So Tyree Kill is going to be running a slant out. 100% of the time helps him because he's very fast. But what if you're not very fast? What if you're not the quickest guy in the NFL or the quickest guy to play football? You, you, you can't rely on just your speed when you get to that next level because everybody's fast. So let's play this thing full speed. So your acceleration is something that you need to have to be an elite wide receiver. And you see even Tyree Kill, the fast wide receiver in the game, can do this. So when you guys are running a route, and again, we talk a lot about it, selling the route. You got to have good pad level. You got to have good stride. And then the break point. You got to drop your hips. But the whole point of having speed into a route and being violent with your break point, whether that's off of a single cut, whether that's you dropping your hips violently, is not only to be able to make a tight change of direction, but it's to create energy. Now your goal, you got separation. Your goal should be, okay, quarterback's putting it to a spot. I'm accelerating to the spot. When you think about it in theory, playing quarterback is not the most, like in theory, it's the hardest position in all of sports. But in theory, it's not that bad. It's like, hey, I'm just going to go put the ball to a spot. I know my receiver has to get there. In the simplest form, that's how you have to think of it. So as a receiver, what I'm thinking is, hey, my quarterback's putting it there. I got to get there faster than the DB gets there. That's all it comes down to, fellas. So we get separation by selling the routes, selling the slant breaking at the break point, get this guy to drive, and now let's accelerate. Let's go run. Let's win the race. Win the race and accelerate to the ball. So that's exactly what Tyreek Hill does. He gets into this break. He pumps his arms. Everything about that is fast. When you guys drop into a break and you're violent and you're powerful with your steps, that will shoot you out of this break. Now we just have to make sure I'm aggressive with my arms, I'm running my arms, and I have that mindset of I'm winning the race to the ball. You guys can sell the route, create energy at the break, get rid of wasted motion at the break, and and accelerate, this DB has no chance to recover. That's a great job there by Tyree Kill. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job selling the slant. Great job getting that DB to bite and then accelerating out to win the race. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We uh, always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you'd like an eight-week wide receiver on-field workout split, all the things wide receivers need to do for route running, releases, hands, etc. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.